The Chicago Midwest chapter of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences presents the 2021 Silver Circle Honors Ceremony. You're about to meet the men and women who've thrived, excelled, and innovated as television professionals. More than 25 years of service to the television industry. Significant contributions to Chicago broadcasting. Excellence in television in front of the camera and behind the scenes. It's time to honor the best of the best. Here to kick off our ceremony is CBS2 anchor reporter and 2018 Silver Circle honoree, Jim Williams. Hello and welcome to the 2021 Silver Circle Honors presentation. It's been a long wait for our group of honorees. They were preparing for their induction at a celebration scheduled for May of 2020 at the Millennium Knickerbocker Hotel. But of course, the pandemic brought all those plans to a halt. Now, a year and a half later, we still face uncertainty in the fight against COVID. So we thank all of our honorees for their patience and understanding. We thank our first responders for their selfless dedication to our well-being. And we thank you for joining us today for this virtual celebration of spectacular television careers. Our first honoree is longtime WGN television anchor, reporter, skydiver, and more, Jackie Bang. She refers to her presenters as her TV husbands, 2007 Silver Circle honoree, Robert Jordan and Taman Bradley. Good evening, everybody. I'm Taman Bradley. I'm Jackie's co-anchor. Proud to be her co-anchor of almost five years now. She is my TV wife. <laughs> Boy, do I adore her. I adore her because of her optimism, because of how brilliant she is, and how much fun we have during the commercial breaks reading our scripts. It's just a pleasure to be up here, to be doing this tribute, to be introducing the great Jackie Bang. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, I hate to interrupt, but I overheard you say that she is your co-anchor for five years. Uh, let me say five years is just a trivial amount of time. Jackie and I were co-anchors for almost 25 years, almost Whoa. five times that much. And I do understand what you're saying and why you're saying it, because Taman, sitting next to Jackie Bang, was indeed a privilege and an honor and something that I just never got enough of. She was so wonderful in keeping me from taking it too far to the silly, and <laughs> she would take it to the serious, and we kind of met in the middle. But uh, her, she was a serious journalist always, and uh, she was able to uh, allow me to just work together with her Whenever we had um, live shots like Osama bin Laden and the shooting, we were able to go on for hours because we were able to work together with um, body language that we got to know about each other. So I'm thrilled as you are that she is being inducted into the Silver Circle, something that was needed to have been done long before. Yes, indeed. Well said, Bob. And here's a little bit more about the great, the legendary Jackie Bang. This is who Jackie Bang grew up watching. It was the same collector who sold her dad on the news. Frankly, for the first couple of years as a kid, I thought, oh, that's normal. Dad's on TV and everybody's father on TV. It took a while before I realized that's kind of cool. Even her mom was in the business. Dee was a star weather girl. <laughs> oh, she was. She was big time in there. In the family of broadcasters, Jackie was the shy one. No. She never mentioned a desire to be in television. No. So I was quite shocked and delighted because yeah. I think she's great. Everybody had all these other talents. I wondered, what am I supposed to do in life? And it came to public speech in sixth grade. This shy little girl felt totally comfortable speaking in front of everybody. And that's when I realized there must be something there. She didn't have to go far to launch her career. For me, being in West Palm Beach was perfect because I was close to my family. I grew up in Florida. I love Florida. It seemed like the perfect fit. And then Chicago called. <laughs> because Chicago is one of the best news markets in the nation, number three in the nation. How could I turn that down? I couldn't. I cried when we took her to the airport because yes. I knew we were losing her. Yeah. What am I doing here? I'm not worthy, but I just plugged away. It wasn't successful. My contract wasn't renewed. 
It happens. It was devastating. But it wasn't over. Her peers offered some encouragement. What I'm sure I told her is that her life can't be guided by the bad judgment of some news director who's going to be gone one of these days. That she needs to stay in the business because she is good. She's real. She's authentic. People feel that what she is on camera is who she is off camera. And that's the God's honest truth. Nobody survives in this business without getting knocked down. And, you know, it's a question of what you do after. And she picked herself up and dusted herself off. Tonight we take you on a trip of a lifetime. And then WGN called. Once again, Jackie was the talk of the town. Walking around Paris with Jackie Bang? It was like, this, I'm getting paid for this? It was really cool. As her career soared, Jackie fell out of the sky. I think that's what surprised me most about her, is that you look at this sort of perfect package of a woman, and then she's taking off her makeup and putting up her hair and jumping out of airplanes. Over three decades, she's logged 1,900 jumps, including a world record for the largest skydive formation. I love it. I don't intend to give it up anytime soon. On the ground, she connected viewers with heroes. My personal favorites were talking to the World War II veterans. I did a number of stories. And helped victims seek justice. There was this one woman who lost her husband to a drunk driver, and the drunk driver was not prosecuted for a felony, and we were able to change that based on our reporting. It's a dream to sit next to Jackie. You're watching Chicago's very own WGN News. So it was sometime in 1993 that Bob and I started our incredible partnership. Side by side for 20 plus years, Jackie and Bob shared more than the playful handshake they choreographed during commercial breaks. Whoa! Hmm? 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 She's a wonderful, wonderful, smart, lovely, passionate person about her craft. She's been just the, the best to work with. I couldn't have asked for a better co-anchor and partner. He has watched me grow up. I remember him giving me advice through dating, through marriage, through kids. He was always there. She would have to bring anybody she was dating into the station so I could meet him. I was kind of like her unofficial dad, and I'd get to check him out. This guy passed the test. I met her in 1999 at a rooftop party at a Cubs game. A few months later, the Honorable George D. Strickland asked Jackie out to dinner. So it began. A wedding, a baby boy, and eventually twins followed. I found Mr. Wonderful at the age of 38, 39, so I got married very late in life. I had kids in my 40s, the last in my mid-40s, and that was, that was a difficult road. But it wasn't difficult for Jackie to step back. She traded more airtime for more time with her family. After seeing these beautiful twin baby girls, I, I went up to Greg Caputo and said, this, this I'd like to continue to watch and see them grow. She had a new schedule, weekends only, and eventually a new partner. Jackie is optimistic. She's hopeful. There's not even a hint of cynicism. It is so rare in the business, and it's just a delight to work with somebody that's that positive. Always a steady and trusted voice, Jackie is still dispatched to the biggest stories. Um, it was only about 300 cameras, which were here about 50 minutes ago. And there are very few people, particularly women, who last decades in the business at all, let alone in one market. She represents the best of us. There's a, there's a grit there, there's a gutsiness there, but there's a humanity there. She is a legend, and she cares deeply about doing it well. I want to say, sister, I am so proud of you, so proud of you, and you do the profession proud. Her longevity means that people trust Jackie Bang. People love Jackie Bang. People will go to bed saying, oh, Jackie Bang said it, it must be true. For this award to recognize long-standing professionalism, to me, there is nothing better.
D-pad and D-bang agreed. We're very proud of her. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Jackie Bang. By the time you see this video, I will have just turned 60 years old. Hard to believe, but I point this out because how often do you see a 60 year old woman anchoring the news? Not too often, but that leads me to my first thank you. And that is to the Chicago viewers. They love their veterans. So for that, I am eternally grateful. To all my colleagues at WGN TV, what a pleasure it is to work with you. Yes, I know you don't see me too much because I work part time and I work on the weekends. But remember, I have been here for decades and there is one constant, and that is the camaraderie in this building. To the weekend warriors, and I mean Lauren and Mike and Taman and all the reporters and all the people behind the scenes, we're a great little family. I love working with you. To the former weekend warriors, and that I mean Rich King, Jim Ramsey, and of course Robert Jordan. We've been together for more than 20 years. That's just unheard of. Then you all left me. That's okay. I miss you. I know you're happy at retirement. When I first came to Chicago, way back in October 1989, I really struggled. I was at WMAQ, and after three and a half years, my contract wasn't renewed. And let me tell you, that was a humbling experience. But there were friends along the way who encouraged me to keep going. To my good friend back then, good friend now, Joan Esposito, thank you. To my drinking buddy, cheers, Ana Rodriguez. To my comrade in arms, Allison Rosati. And to Carol Marine, you took me out to lunch before I was let go. And you said you deserve to stay in Chicago, work on it. If Carol Marine tells you to work on it, she was inspira inspirational. Thank you very much, Carol. Now, I have to thank Jennifer Schulze for hiring me at WGN-TV, for Carol Fowler for rehiring me at WGN-TV after I quit, traveled the world, and then came back, to Jennifer Lyons and Sandy Pudar, who brought humanity to the position of news director and assistant news director. Notice these are all women. Women make good leaders in this business. But it's not just women I need to thank. To the current bosses, Paul Rennie, Dom Stasi, and yeah, even you, Rick Strasser. It's a joy to work with you, and thank you for allowing me to keep this schedule. To Greg Caputo, who gave me this schedule, thank you so much. You changed my life. You allowed me to stay in this business and at the same time watch my family grow. And uh, boy, have they grown. To Big Judge George, my husband, to my handsome tall son, Josh, to my beautiful twins, Grace and Gwen, you mean the world to me. Now I'd like to dedicate this award, this beautiful award, to my family, my three sisters and my mom and dad, who inspired me every day, not just by words, but by what they did. NATAS, this is such a great honor. I can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations to Jackie on a great career that continues to this day on WGN TV. Stay with us after a break. We'll introduce you to one of this TV market's great news producers and we'll tell you about the TV Academy scholarship program. You'll hear from recipients how much these scholarships mean to them. Welcome back. As you heard at the top of our celebration, the Silver Circle Award honors outstanding individuals who have devoted 25 years or more to the television industry and who have made significant contributions to local broadcasting. The Chicago Midwest chapter of the Television Academy has made sure that people behind the camera are recognized as well as the easily recognized men and women on the air. So now we go behind the scenes. We are proud to induct a powerhouse producer into the Silver Circle, Marta LeBeau. Her presenter is 2016 Silver Circle honoree, Marianne Childers, who graced the anchor desk at both WLS-TV and WBBM-TV, someone who knows the value of a great producer. Hi, everybody. I'm so pleased to introduce Marta LeBeau, a colleague, a dear friend, and a woman who had a huge impact on the news that Chicagoans watched every night for nearly four decades. Talk about starting at the bottom and ending up at the top. 
She went from desk assistant to news executive, working for 15 news directors and for 10 general managers, which is probably reason for an award in itself. At some point, I think Marta probably did every job in the newsroom, except maybe anchor, but I'm sure she could have done that very well too. But it was as a producer that Marta just really excelled. She's talented, dedicated, principled, and very persistent. She's extremely resourceful, she can be wickedly funny, and she is a stickler for accuracy. Marta LeBeau never compromised, and very honestly, sometimes that drove a lot of us crazy. But it also made us better. Better writers, reporters, producers, anchors, better storytellers. Marta's got this combination of smarts and charm that can convince people to do almost anything. It's very hard to tell Marta LeBeau no. She once convinced 20 middle-aged women to put on bathing suits and let us film their thighs for a story about a cream that claimed to remove cellulite. Uh, the cream didn't work. The women Marta found, they were fabulous. <laughs> Marta's instincts for a good story are the absolute best. She never shied away from a story because it was too controversial or too difficult. And she can be tough as nails. She would stand up to anybody. But she would also stand up for us, the people she worked with. Together, Marta and I produced hundreds of medical stories, and she loved to sink her teeth into a good investigation. I think Marta took the greatest pleasure in stories that help people take more control over their lives. Above all, Marta cared, not just about the stories, but about the people who watched them and about those of us who were lucky enough to work with her. Oh, there's one more thing. Marta's the kind of person who would never ever seek recognition for herself, which is why it gives me the greatest pleasure to recognize her now and to share with you some highlights from her long and remarkable career. Marta LeBeau was involved in the coverage of virtually every major Chicago television news story, local, national, international, for nearly 50 years. But her passion for news developed long before that. Marta was reading captions under pictures in newspapers when her friends were still captivated by Dick and Jane. Her first job in broadcasting was at ABC7, answering phones on the assignment desk. Then she started digging, first as a researcher for Seven on Your Side, a unit she helped transform from pothole patrols to breaking hard news. She would also produce both weekend and weekday newscasts. But Marta really hit her stride when she moved on to special projects. She had a long partnership with anchor reporter Marianne Childers, covering health and medicine. For example, LASIK was a new and popular procedure, but no one was hearing about side effects until their team raised red flags. As executive producer of special projects at CBS2, investigations became a top priority. Shooting with a night vision lens, we triggered the alarm right outside their bedroom door. The medical unit she supervised was among the first to report that children often didn't wake up when smoke detectors went off. Marta was not a stay in the newsroom producer. For ABC7 and then CBS2, she traveled the country and the world covering high-profile stories like historic presidential elections, the elevation of Cardinal George in Rome, and papal pilgrimages across North America. When Marta was there, you knew you had it covered, and you knew she had your back. She was part of the team which won a national Emmy for coverage of the death of Pope John Paul II. In Israel in 1991, despite being under attack from Scud missiles and possible chemical weapons, she produced stories of Israelis with Chicago ties and the stresses suffered by both Israeli and Palestinian families. It was a story I really wanted to go on and I had pitched very strongly to go on. I knew the assignment was dangerous, but I didn't know how dangerous it was. And uh, as a news person, 
it was the place to go. Marta, you were involved in so many stories that created change and made this world a better place. You excel at so many things, but one of the things that I've always admired about you so much is your ability to roll with any kind of story that comes your way. We have two groundbreaking exclusive CBS2 investigations. As executive producer of special projects and the CBS2 investigators, Marta juggled crews, reporters, stories, schedules, impossible deadlines, demanding bosses, and more than a few egos. She had a golden gut for a great story, was an amazing researcher, and she simply never gave up. Your mind works like a combined Encyclopedia Britannica, Webster's Dictionary, and the most insane Rolodex of Who's Who in Chicago. She was always looking for the best angle, the best interview, the best script, to make sure every story had impact. I probably learned more from you in my six years there than from anyone else in my career. You shut them down immediately and get them out of our town. We don't want you here anymore. Marta was a force behind Dave Savini's investigations into sterogenics, which exposed emissions by the Willowbrook facility that have been linked to cancer. You gotta believe they She championed nationally acclaimed investigations that documented police raids on the wrong homes. They really hurt you that day. You were a part of some of the biggest investigative stories we've ever done, and you won every single major award. The Murrow, the Peabody, and the DuPont. She supervised Brad Edwards' investigation into the Chicago Water Department, which was billing people even when buildings were vacant or had no connections for water service. Marta not only made my stories better, she made me better. With Pulitzer Prize winning investigator Pam Zekman, she helped uncover massive fraud by telemarketers, doctors, and suppliers. Their undercover work exposed stem cell clinics that claimed phony success rates. Are you cheating people by giving them false hope? Marta is a great script doctor. Her edits make every story better. When I mentioned to my wife that I was uh, doing this video, her first comment to me was, wow, I miss Marta's calls. Marta's work won countless awards for her personally and for the teams she led. With Marta as executive producer in 2019, the CBS2 investigators won nine local Emmy Awards, a Peabody, and a national Emmy nomination. We couldn't be happier for you. This is such a great honor. You're an amazing journalist. You're a fantastic human being. Congratulations, Marta. Congratulations, Marta. And I love her and I miss her, and there's no one more deserving. I just am just so grateful that um, Marta LeBeau is my mom and I have her in my life. Joining us now with her acceptance speech, Marta LeBeau. Hello everyone, I'm Marta LeBeau and I'm proud to have been a news person for 40 years and very proud to be a Silver Circle recipient. I loved everything that goes into producing a good story. My mission was to treat the viewer with the greatest respect. As journalists, we are obligated to be clear, accurate and ethical. That was on my mind, whether I was writing a 20 second reader or working on the script for a seven minute investigation. But I also believed in finding the most relevant stories and not stopping until I was certain the research, the writing and the production were the best they could be. People called me a perfectionist and they were right. I worked hard and I was determined and I was also lucky to work with good reporters people who developed their sources and beats and took every story seriously. And I was lucky to have managers who believed in meaty, well-written, beautifully edited pieces. It's true, we often had crazy time restrictions, like two minutes and 30 seconds for an investigation, but that got better. The last investigations we did while I was at CBS2 were six to seven minutes. I have so many people to thank. Jay Levine, my first mentor and a great reporter, who for me was always an example of absolute determination. Marianne Childers, while working with her, I learned to love long form, well-researched stories that deeply inform people. And then there are the CBS2 investigators. First of all, Pam Zekman, Chicago's leading investigator, who taught me so much about how to do it right. Dave Savini, a reporter with great heart and strength the enormously talented Brad Edwards, and the hard-driving Dorothy Tucker. Our talented producers, K Carol Thompson, Michelle Youngerman, Sama Assad, and Dan Blum. I loved working with them. 
Many thanks to the photojournalists and editors who made our pieces beautiful, Aleph Mohammed and Carol, Carolyn Broquet, and especially Mike Klingel, who I worked with most closely and who was always there for us. As for news directors, the ones who stand out for me, Carol Fowler, Jeff Kiernan, and Jeff Harris. Our CBS lawyers, Rick Altebeff and Andy Siegel, who were unfailingly supportive. A final thanks to Marianne Childers, who produced this video. She has been my dear friend and colleague for more than 30 years, and one of the people whose respect I cherish most. As an executive producer, I spent a lot of time defending investigative units and their right to exist. After all, they're expensive, but in the end, I was lucky enough to have news directors who listened. Now, more than ever, we need investigations and experienced investigators. If the last decade has not proven that, nothing will. After 40 years in news, I'm now a docent at the Illinois Holocaust Museum, telling the story of what happened then and how we can learn from it now. I look on it as an extension of my career in news. I have no idea who nominated me for Silver Circle, but thank you for thinking of me. And thanks to everyone out there for listening to me tonight. Thank you, Marta, and congratulations. Now we want to take a moment to tell you about the TV Academy's very successful scholarship program. The Natus Chicago Foundation is the charitable arm of the National Academy of the Television Arts and Sciences, Chicago Midwest Chapter. Its mission is to provide scholarships to deserving high school and college students who are studying or intend to study some aspect of television. Today, the foundation is extremely pleased to announce its latest scholarship recipients. Here's Foundation President and 2014 Silver Circle honoree Carol Cartwright to tell us about these deserving students. On behalf of the Chicago Natus Foundation, I'd like to congratulate and welcome the new inductees into the Silver Circle. You know, the foundation was created over 28 years ago to support bright and upcoming broadcast students. And over the years, we've been able to do that. We've been able to secure and give out over $600,000 worth of scholarship money to bright students who are going to be great contributors to the television industry. And that's what we're doing tonight. And I want to thank all of the people who have supported us, uh, not only the members of the Silver Circle, but Television Academy members and other corporate sources. Uh, the money that you've contributed has meant a great deal to these students, and our support means a great deal to them. So tonight, we're going to introduce you to the 2021 High School Student Scholarship winners. Zach Cameron receives the Board of Governors Scholarship. He's a graduate of Riverside Brookfield High School and will attend Ball State University majoring in telecommunications with a focus on broadcast engineering. Zach found his passion for television while studying and working at his Riverside Brookfield High School's television department, RBTV, where he specialized in the engineering side of television. While there, he renovated and overhauled studios A and B control rooms and engineered all of RBTV's live productions. For RBTV, Zach produced, directed, and edited a live-to-tape cooking show called Cook This. He also worked at local station Riverside TV alongside television professionals. He can't wait to dive into system integrations, repair, and equipment while at Ball State. Zach's goal is to become a broadcast engineer working in television sports. Stella Belaskas receives a Silver Circle Scholarship. She's a graduate of Glenbrook North High School and will attend Syracuse University, majoring in broadcast and digital journalism. From a young age, Stella wanted to be a news anchor. Hearing the words, three, two, one, take camera one, coming up Sparta News Now, was a mantra that gave Stella an adrenaline rush. This sentence kicked off Glenbrook North's award-winning news program, which she produced, anchored, and reported. She also served as a play-by-play -play announcer for sporting events. At Syracuse, she plans to learn the ins and outs of the television industry, working hard to build a firm foundation for her future. Stella learned the grit and creativity it takes to be a quality journalist. 
She enjoys telling a story that hasn't been told and has a lofty goal to one day anchor World News Tonight. Dominic Leaconi receives a Silver Circle Scholarship. He's a graduate of Neuqua Valley High School and will attend Ball State University studying digital sports production. Dominic had a dream in mind from a young age to become a play-by-play -play announcer for television. During his four years in Neuqua Valley High School's Wildcat Weekly Television Program, Dominic was active in the media department where he learned camera operation, narrative sequencing, editing, and hosted a student-based sports talk show called Goal Zone. In addition, Dominic, an avid varsity baseball player at Neuqua Valley, was hired this past summer as an on-field reporter and play-by-play -play announcer for a collegiate baseball team. Dominic is looking forward to emerging into Ball State's sports link, the ESPN of college sports, where he can call games and produce, edit, and package stories. Congratulations to our Chicago 2021 High School Scholarship winners. Thank you, Carol, and a number worth repeating, $600,000, the scholarship money awarded to high school and college students since the TV Academy Chicago Midwest chapter launched its scholarship program. To donate to the scholarship fund, please visit chicagoemmyonline.org. As we go to break, let's hear from some previous Natus Chicago scholars on the importance of the program and what it meant to them. Hi everyone, I'm Eyewitness News Digital Journalist Jesse Kirsch and a proud past recipient of the Natus Chicago Midwest Chapter's Board of Governors Scholarship. The program gave me financial support and added confidence to chase my dreams a year ago. Thank you to Natus, Tom Skilling, and, and everyone responsible for me just over a year ago being a recipient of the Tom Skilling Scholarship. I would not be here today without your belief in my ambitions. The members of the Chicago Midwest Television Academy traditionally use this as an opportunity to salute college students who have outstanding potential for a successful future in the industry. The most obvious way that the scholarship helped me was to relieve financial burden. Free money is great, <laughs> but the way that it helped me for the rest of my life is that it gave me this confidence that I could achieve anything that I want. And the fact that I put in for it and that I worked for it and that I worked hard to get it and I got it sort of gave me this confidence in myself and a belief in myself that if I put my mind to something that I can achieve anything that I want and that nothing can really get in my way. I think the reason people should support scholarship funds is because when people are writing a check, I don't think they realize the meaning behind that check the meaning of what it means to a student to get help to achieve the dreams that they want. And what it means is they're writing that check to show students that they're supported in every way and that they can achieve something just by somebody participating in their future. Our Silver Circle celebration continues now, and our next honoree is longtime sports anchor reporter Mark Gian Greco. Mark worked in Dayton, Ohio, and Louisville, Kentucky before joining WMAQ TV here in Chicago back in 1982. He joined ABC 7 in 1994, and over the years, Mark has proven to be popular with sports fans and non sports fans alike. During his career, Mark won multiple Emmys, Peter Lissiger, and Associated Press Awards. He says he's honored and flattered to be chosen for the Silver Circle and extends his best wishes to the TV Academy and all the other honorees. Every year, the TV Academy honors a few television legends posthumously, paying tribute to groundbreaking work done by TV professionals who are no longer with us. Today, we honor an on-air salesperson, early innovators in children's programming, and a pioneer who taught us all about animals that share the planet with us. Our first posthumous honoree is Lynn Haldren, best known as the Empire Carpet Man. As you will see in this video, Lynn was a great salesperson, a marketing genius, Genius and a pretty good singer as well. Let's talk about buying carpets. On one hand, you want the best price. On the other hand, you want the best service. 
On the other hand, why not get both? Just pick up the phone and call Empire. We're the carpet specialists. Lynn Haldron is the guy known around the world for his nicely tapered mustache, thick glasses, and low-key fun approach to selling carpets. Lynn's magic carpet ride began in 1977 when, as an independent advertising executive, he wrote the Empire Carpet Jingle that would make the company's phone number one of the most recognizable in the country. 588 empire In addition to the jingle, Lynn created the Empire Carpet Man character. After auditioning several actors, the company's owners asked Lynn to play the role. The rest is carpeting history. 50% off. That's a lot of cutting for a lot of savings. Really save on carpet. I'm to it! Uh, most of us are really excited. Right now, you get a free telephone or a free shampoo. Or free, 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 but act right now. Save 50% on Empire's monster carpet sale. It's a sale you can sink your teeth into. <laughs> Elmer Lynn Haldron was born in Missouri and had a flair for communications and music from an early age. He was a decorated World War II veteran and met his wife Helen while in the military. They were married for 68 years and had six children, 16 grandchildren, and 12 great-grandchildren. Along with a successful advertising career, Lynn Haldren is also well-known for his music talents, harmonizing with several barbershop quartets, including the award-winning Cordiac Arrest. That's the worst jello I've had since last July. That's a Kansas City jello. So excuse the parting sigh. Bye bye. Of course, with such music talent, it was only a matter of time until one of Lynn's barbershop quartets sang its way into carpeting stardom. Time to call for carpet. It's our sweetheart sale. Lynn Haldren's singing talents and dedication to barbershop quartets earned him the Music Man Award from the Illinois District Quartet Champions Association. He also won two Clio Awards for advertising. And you know you've made it when you have your own bobblehead or a stuffed doll, when you're invited to throw out the first pitch at Wrigley Field, or when you can ring bells for charity with the likes of news legends Harry Porterfield and Steve Baskerville. But Lynn never let his fame get the best of him. That was much appreciated by those he worked with, including WGN-TV's Steve Novak, who directed almost 200 of Lynn's commercials. Great guy, loved the crew, worked well with the crew. We worked in a commercial, he used to be up in, a, in the rafters of the, uh, of the warehouse, and that was his, his thing he did. Well, one day we took him up on the lift, he's up there doing the thing, we're supposed to bring him down on the lift, the lift got stuck. He was up on the lift for a little while. He created an environment that was fun to work in. Hey guys, how do I get down from here? Lynn Haldren had a zest for life. He was a boating fanatic known for giving his boats clever musical names like C Sharp. That's S-E-A Sharp, of course. He also loved to ski, a sport he took up at the age of 60. Lynn was 89 years young when he died of natural causes in 2011. His passing was memorialized in a Chicago Sun-Times editorial cartoon. And the Empire Carpet Man even lived on in animated form, with Lynn's voice at the end saying, Today. 800-588-2300 Empire. Today. Lynn Haldren, advertising wizard, barbershop baritone, and as his business card says, the guy next door. Now we welcome him into the Television Academy's Silver Circle. 800-588-2300 Empire. Here to accept on behalf of Lynn Haldren are three of his children, Linda Polanzani, along with her brothers, Ryan and Dave Haldren. Hi, we're three of Lynn Haldren's six children. And I know dad, if he were here to accept this award, would be humbled and honored to be included in the 2020 Silver Circle Award. Dad often wrote lyrics to songs for special occasions. And since this is a special occasion, We'd like to read some lyrics from a song our brother Joe wrote about our father. He was an empire builder, not a carpet bagger, a blue collar superhero with personality. He wrote a catchy jingle that was a hit single on the radio and on everyone's TV. Empire gave him a bobblehead because he was a thoroughbred. They had no idea how long it would last. No money down, no interest, no payments for 90 days, free insulation, free padding, just in time for the holidays. The Empire Carpet Man, known throughout the land, but no one knows him like his family. 
living life to the fullest. Oh yeah, he was the coolest. Would you know what they'll say when they write the history? Five eight eight two three hundred Empire. You can tell that creativity runs in the family. Thanks to the entire Haldron clan. Next, we honor two of the original innovators in television programming for children, Jack and Elaine Mulqueen. Their charm, creativity, and innovation paved the way for kids programming more than a half century ago. The Mulqueen's Kitty A Go Go, the only show of its kind across the country. It was groundbreaking television, the Mulqueen's Kitty A Go Go. The name of the show was tweaked a few times in the 1960s as it bounced from WGN to WBKB to WCIU. But the creative couple behind the program remained the same. Elaine Mulqueen as a pixie-like character named Pandora and her husband Jack Mulqueen working as the puppeteer. Come on over here now. We've got two real good jokes for you. Did yeah. Geronimo tell I you think to... What, what did you say? Did she hand? tell you to put your thinking hat on? Of course. All right. What did you say you got here? I've got two kitty go with jokes. Oh, I thought you said two jokes. <laughs> All right. Now, now, don't touch the prizes, will you? Just keep your nibble knockers off the That's prize. That's a prize? That's the it's prize. kind of a cheap gift. Very <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. Now, if Spike... I hope your jokes are better than the gifts I give you, kid. That was Elaine as Pandora, talking with Moops, one of the many puppets created by Jack. His love for puppets began in grade school and continued in the Army as he put on puppet shows for the GIs. Jack met Elaine post-Army. They were married and formed a partnership both in the home and in the TV studio. Jack and Elaine's career in children's programming began on WTTW when they appeared on the Totem Club. And they got a big boost in 1962 when they appeared in weekly skits on WGN-TV's Bozo Circus. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another pleasant surprise for you in our center ring. So welcome the Model Queen. Jack and Elaine weren't clowning around when they launched Kitty A Go Go and moved it from station to station. The program evolved into a preteen version of American Bandstand and featured several recording artists from the 60s, including the New Colony Six. But now I'd like you to meet Chicago's own New Colony Six with their latest recording, I Lie Awake! I lie awake counting my time of breaking out of The Mulqueens interacted with hundreds of thousands of children during their career. They never had children of their own, but they opened their home to the needy, fostering several children over the years. During Kitty A Go Go's run, Elaine was always the on-camera star, but occasionally Jack, the puppeteer, would make an appearance. You can't play Mr. Hands. For well, one thing, you've got shoes on. on. Watch, Besides, every time, time you play games, you lose for them. We want them to trying to hurt my feelings for. No, I just want our kitty go to, to win the prizes we got. We got I, giant Tootsie Rolls here. But these girls are bigger than this boy, and I got to come out and help them. Jack and Elaine were experts in the art of marketing, producing live commercials, promotions, and program segments that would entertain while selling a product. I'll never forget how excited I was when the Country's Delight people invited me to visit their dairy. First, we start our trip where the raw milk is transported to the main bottling plant from tanker trucks. Jack and Elaine ended their TV careers in 1969, but pursued their passion for television and movie memorabilia by hosting Hollywood Collectibles, shows attended by thousands of fans at various hotels. They would have fans come in and talk to stars that they would get to come and the stars would sign autographs and you'd have people like TV stars, like here's the person from Bewitched. And they did that for over 15 years 
um, at least once a year renting out um, the hotel uh, lobby thing to have everybody come in. In 2004, Jack co-authored the book, The Golden Age of Chicago Children's Television. In one of several appearances promoting the book, Jack recalled the story of a conversation he had in the 60s with the program director of WBKB, Channel 7. And I said, what did you think of the show? This is what he said, exact words. It's the worst show I ever saw, but the kids love it. And approved it because we, were, we moved up within a couple of months to a quarter of a million rating, beating out network shows with a $125,000 rating. Within a short time, we had Kitty Agogo candy on the market. Carson's was selling Kitty Agogo uh, sweatshirts. We had a Kitty Agogo theme song that's selling in the stores, being played on LS and the other stations. Elaine died in 2012. Jack died four years later. During their careers, they graced children's programming with their creativity, spontaneity, and love. They were charming. They were funny. They were the Mole Queens. Accepting for the Mole Queens is Jack's sister, Marianne O'Neill, and Elaine's nieces, Judy Valkenberg and Dana Wagner. I'd like to thank the Academy for honoring my brother Jack and his wife Elaine for their 25 years service to Chicago Television. Sad to say, they are not here to accept the award, but I'd like to share with you a few precious memories I have of my brother that led him on the road to entertainment. When Jack was a boy, he loved puppets. He would set up a makeshift stage in our yard and invite all the neighbors to see his shows. Of course, I think it might have helped that we had free refreshments for them that got them there, but they enjoyed it and they loved it. When he was in the service of our country in Fort Carson, Colorado, near Colorado Springs, there was a need to cement good relationship between the fort and the town. And Jack developed a plan to do puppet shows for the children of, in their schools and the t any town organization that would like it. It really helped to cement relationships. When he came home, he met the love of his life, Elaine, at a dance on the south side of Chicago. Elaine was a very supportive wife. She eventually became his partner as Pandora, the bubbly pixie host of their shows. They made appearances on Bozo Circus. They went on to have their own show on WGN. And then they created a show called Kitty A Go Go. I still meet people who recall either dancing to the music on their show or in front of the televisions in their own homes. If Jack were here, I think he would end his speech with, if there's something you love doing in life, even with all its ups and downs, follow your dream and do it. Thank you. On behalf of our aunt and uncle, Jack and Elaine Mulqueen, we would like to thank you for recognizing them as two of this year's Silver Circle honorees. This was their life work. They took every opportunity to share their love of entertaining with others. Early on in their career, they found pleasure and satisfaction by bringing laughter and joy to childhood audiences of both their puppet and their TV shows. Later, they continued their dreams by creating a platform that allowed so many others to share in their love of TV and movie memorabilia. Jack and Elaine were one of the few husband and wife teams that were working on television at that time and they made a perfect pair working together. In fact, their show's popularity is still seen today. Not only do the baby boomers have their own memories of the show, but now they're sharing some of those memories with their own children. For example, there are over 100,000 hits on YouTube for one of the early Kitty A Go Go shows. On a more personal note, our aunt and uncle's love of TV and movies and performing has had a huge influence on us. In fact, on most of their nieces and nephews. There are so many memories that we have that include 
being one of the dancers on the drum or the floor of the Kitty A Go Go show, to Uncle Jack creating a new puppet for the show based on a trip my sister had going to the dentist. Later, as we were older, our aunt and uncle started the Hollywood Collectibles show. What initially just started as helping out turned into a passion for us. Over the 15 plus years, we do have to admit there were many perks working there, which included being able to meet many famous actors and actresses, such as The Professor, Marianne, Catwoman, Batgirl, Peter Davidson, and Mrs. Kravitz, just to name a few. We also enjoyed the many interactions and friendships that we formed with the dealers and the customers, movie trivia buffs from across the country that came back year after year. As quoted by country singer Joe Nichols, being an entertainer includes knowing how to connect with an audience. This is definitely something our aunt and uncle, Elaine and Jack McQueen, achieved throughout their career. Thank you again for honoring their legacy. Our thanks to Marianne, Judy, and Dana for accepting on behalf of Jack and Elaine and for helping dig up photos and other memorabilia to put together the Mulqueen's career video. Don't go away, we'll be back in a moment to honor a television pioneer, zoologist Marlon Perkins. Now we continue the Silver Circle celebration by honoring zoologist Marlon Perkins with the TV Academy's Pioneer Award. Marlon Perkins created the nature program genre during the earliest years of television. He was an advocate for preservation of healthy ecosystems, a master class photographer of animals in the wild, and a true television pioneer. Pioneering zoologist Marlon Perkins joined Chicago's Lincoln Park Zoo in the mid 1940s. And within a few short years, he also became a broadcast pioneer. At an experimental station that eventually became WLS, he brought zoo inhabitants to the TV studio to educate viewers about animals and nature. Well, I had known that television was coming for a long time. I knew too that it would be a dynamic media because television is radio that you can see. I knew that this would be a fantastic media for telling the animal story and publicizing the zoo, which was in those days being beamed to all 300 television receivers in the Chicago area. So there weren't a lot of people watching. This led in 1950 to the creation of Zoo Parade, live from Lincoln Park Zoo, during an era when live remotes and television itself were in their infancy. Zoo Parade, brought to you from the world-famous Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago. Yes, this goose knows where the animals live. Here to tell us the why and how of this problem is Marlon Perkins, director of the Lincoln Park Zoo. Hello there, glad you could join us again today. You find us now today out here at the Duck Pond at the Lincoln Park Zoo. This is always a favorite spot of mine. Created at Channel 5, Zoo Parade aired on the NBC network from 1950 to 1957. At a time when great apes were not all that common in American zoos, Chicago's Bushmen and Sinbad became household names. There's some film uh, that was taken on Bushmen's last birthday on April the 1st, 1950. Ed Robinson is preparing the birthday cake. The candles are carrots and celery stalks. So the cake is placed in Bushman's cage, and out he comes to take a look at it. He doesn't seem too awfully interested in that cake. He doesn't seem to be able to make up his mind whether he's going to have any cake or not. Here, Ed, you sample this. See if you like it. Well, Ed tries to feed the carrot stalk back to Bushman, but Bushman just doesn't seem to be very hungry at this time. Zoo Parade's successful run led to the creation of Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, which aired on NBC for nine years before beginning first-run syndication of the program in 1971. Wild Kingdom remained in syndication until 1988. Hello, welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. From Zoo Parade through Wild Kingdom, Perkins pioneered the nature program genre and stressed the importance of conservation while visiting animal habitats around the globe. 
The program helped increase environmental and ecological awareness as viewers took in the sights of South America, the Australian outback, and the wilds of Africa. But the shows weren't all cute animal babies. There were rattlesnake bites and rampaging elephants and necessary cautions when wrestling snakes in the Amazon. The bite of an anaconda is very painful. Got him. But I'll have to hold on tight. He has over a hundred teeth. And if he bites you, you'll never pull free. He keeps pulling us off a ledge into deep water. One of us alone wouldn't stand a chance against this snake. Its coils are searching for something solid. He's got a tremendous advantage in the water, maneuvering with ease. We can't move fast enough to avoid him. The greatest danger now is in drowning or suffocation. When he wraps his coils around you, he can completely cut off your breathing. Through the years, the brilliance of Zoo Parade and Wild Kingdom and their creators were celebrated with the awarding of two Peabody's and four National Emmys. We honor Marlon Perkins with the Silver Circle Pioneer Award. Here to accept the Pioneer Award for Marlon Perkins is his daughter, Suzanne Perkins Gordon. It's a great honor for me to accept the Possima Silver Circle Award on behalf of my father, Marlon Perkins, for his many years of service to both the animal world and television broadcasting. I'm sure he would have been very proud to be included in the company of so many other accomplished honorees. As Marlon Perkins' daughter, I grew up with an appreciation of all animals and wildlife on our planet that my dad loved and cared about, understood, and shared with all of us through his television programs that he hosted, Zoo Parade and, of course, and Brazil Omaha's Wild Kingdom. As you know, these shows were both educational and entertaining and included important issues such as extinction and migration. As a young girl, my dad showed me how to handle snakes of different sizes, carrying them in burlap bags. So I became familiar with the feel of their smooth, cool skin and their intricate patterns. I never developed fear of snakes. Growing up in Chicago, he advised me to do what you love and was always supportive of my art studies, which began at the School of the Art Institute and supportive of my becoming an artist. Another passion my father passed on to me was his lifelong fascination with and curiosity, really, about new media and new technology. He would show us a new product, camera, a lens, or whatever, and say, look what this can do. My dad showed me the process of beginning producing live TV programs in the location truck at the Lincoln Park Zoo, where I was fascinated by the the display of monitors and watch the director put together the show. I remember the huge TV cameras mounted on heavy bases on wheels while the cameramen walked behind them, wheeling them. I really enjoy looking at the beautiful engraved silver circle plaque. Thank you again to the Television Academy for bestowing this honor upon my father, Marlon Perkins. Our thanks to Suzanne for those wonderful comments about her dad, Marlon Perkins. We will continue the Silver Circle Honors Program after a break by honoring a director, and we'll also show you the excellent video work being done by some high school students. Now, with so much on the line. Good evening, it's great to have you with us. Here. More people turn here. America's number one most watched newscast, ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. As we come on the air tonight, there are major developments. And ABC 7 Eyewitness News, Chicago's number one news with Alan Krzyzewski and Cheryl Burton. 
Local, national, straightforward facts right here. ABC 7 Eyewitness News and ABC World News Tonight. Welcome back to the Silver Circle celebration. Our next honoree represents the art of directing, calling the shots during a wide range of events and special programs. He is Richard Bernal. Here to introduce Richard is longtime NBC5 director of the 10 p.m. news and director of some of the station's biggest productions, including the Chicago Marathon, Patrick Lake. Directing, to quote film and television director William Friedkin, if a director is not up to the task at hand, it's like the movie The Cane Mutiny. There's no shortage of junior officers willing to step up and take the captain's job. Directing is a tough profession. I'm here today to present the 2020 Silver Circle Award to Richard Burnell from the National Academy of Arts and Sciences for his lifelong achievement in the field of television direction. Richard's journey all started for him one unsuspecting day in 1948 when his parents decided to go on a shopping trip to the Sears department store. In modern terms, we could geotag his location at about 63rd and Halstead, the TV department. There, a young Rich Burnell walked into a room filled with a wall of blinking cathode ray tubes. For our younger viewers, television sets, Richard Burnell was hooked. Rich's older brother, Lalo, had a high-tech job working for RCA as a television repairman. So it was no surprise to Richard's parents when Richard came home and proudly announced that he, too, would be going into the field of television. There was only one problem that caused his family some confusion and a little dismay. Richard didn't want to repair televisions. He wanted to create television. A graduate of the University of Illinois, class of 62, with a BS in journalism and communications. Rich's first foray into the field of television was at WILL-TV in Champaign. There, Richard started learning his craft by being a production assistant and a studio camera operator. This future three-time Emmy winner would have to take a slight detour, though, before his professional career would begin. Military service and a deployment to Korea would come calling. Richard put his newly learned production skills to use at AFKN, the American Forces Korean Network, for a two-year tour of duty. Fast forward to 1965, a creative assistant position at WFLD-TV. Rich was there when they pulled the switch and put Channel 32 on the air. In 1971, Rich left WFLD-TV and started his 33-year storied career at CBS2, the first Latino television director in the city of Chicago. News, sports, children's programming, and specials all would fill his chromatic palette. Richard also embarked on a 40-year career as an adjunct professor at Columbia College. The testament to his teaching and legacy stand tall. Joe Vinci, Mark Zerowick, John Davies, Sergio Lozano, Dave Turner, and Howard Florence, all working today as top flight broadcast professionals. All Rich Burnell trained. And by the way, Rich, they all send their best. So now I'll let Richard tell you the rest of his story in his own words. But first, Richard, I must speak to you in an ancient language that only you and a select few in our audience will understand. I'll need the help, though, through the magic of television. A room, zoom, zoom. A room, zoom, zoom. Gilly, 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 ah, sa, sa. Come through the magic door with me, Richard. Just say these words, and a wondrous career you'll see. I've been remarkably fortunate. A 38-year career in television, and all in my hometown. And it started at a television station that wasn't even on the air yet, WFLD Channel 32. I joined a crew of young creative assistants, and we worked all production and technical positions. It was an historic moment to be in the room on January 4th, 1966. The switch was flipped, and Channel 32 began its broadcasting life. A lot of people felt that a UHF station couldn't succeed in Chicago, but Channel 32 was the little station that could. The studio was always buzzing with productions, news shows, features with Bert Hilstrom, Kuklanelli, Miss Frances Stingdog School, and an interview with Bill Veck, former and future owner of the White Sox, as host. Within 18 months, we moved into the largest studios at Marina City. We acquired a new state-of-the-art remote truck for our new White Sox baseball broadcasts. I was directing a lot of the studio programs. Those included the talk shows, now with a large studio audience and a new kids show that became very popular. 
originally called Cartoon Town with Bill Jackson, it's soon retitled to BJ and the Dirty Dragon. I also directed many of the early episodes of the horror movie show Screaming the Yellow Theater, hosted by the original Svengooly, Jerry G. Bishop. Yes, today we'll be making a truly exotic dish. You can't do that on TV. Not that kind of dish. I always wanted to work at a network TV station, and in 1971 I moved to WBBM TV Channel 2 as a staff director. I would be there for the next 33 years. Being the junior man on staff meant that I had an irregular schedule. That actually turned out to have a benefit. As a fill-in, I got to work the many different productions on the program schedule. Many special projects that came along seemed to get funneled to me. I was directing the daily Lee Phillip News Show, and one day a producer called to tell me that Lee was going to fill a documentary on the Illinois Foster Children's Service. And since I was her regular director, I would be directing her special as well. That documentary, The Forgotten Children, went on to win a national Emmy for Lee. I felt quite proud to have directed it for her. And whenever you mention Channel 2 of the 70s and 80s, you had to think of... The Channel 2 News was number one in ratings for many years. Besides the anchors, the Channel 2 News team had outstanding reporters, shooters, editors, and writers. I feel privileged to have been witness to their craft. I realized I was sitting in the director's chair for those newscasts. I had a front row seat to history. Channel 2 News in the 80s also met the Bears and Mike Ditka. Every Sunday during football season, we had to stop whatever we were taping in order to go shoot the Bears extra with the coach. Sundays were busy days of the fall. Two newscasts, the coach, and the magic door. The magic door was a sustaining show that satisfied FCC requirements for religious and children's programming. It featured puppets and elves who told stories of kindness. Despite limited budget and taping time, the magic door managed to win two Chicago Emmys for Best Children's Series. Its offshoot, Beyond the Magic Door, featured live actors and puppets, much like Sesame Street. Somebody, somebody, oh, yeah. One very special event for me was the 1979 visit of Pope John Paul II to Chicago. All the Chicago TV stations cooperated to cover the many locations the Pope would appear. I was assigned as Pope Fee Director from the Potter's visit to Holy Name Cathedral. I participated in the type of production that I doubt will ever happen again on local commercial television. It's a musical tribute to Harold Washington titled Harold's Journey. It features the Chicago Symphony Edit conducted by Maestro Paul Freeman, operatic soloists, the Apostolic Church of God Crossbow Choir, and narrated by John Davis. It was a great experience and helped me receive a Chicago Emmy. Looking back, I have been remarkably fortunate. Now again, Richard Bernal. The Silver Circle. I'm extremely honored. Seeing my name listed among distinguished Chicago TV legends is a mind bender because the only goal I sought throughout my TV career odyssey was always to do the best I could at whatever task I was given. Induction into the Silver Circle is a pinnacle of that quest. There are many I must thank for this honor. I want to thank the members of the Academy, especially Cheryl Stutsky, Patrick Lake, and Jim Dish. I also thank video editor Steve Tchaikovsky for his help, and for finding much of the vintage video in the piece. To all the crew at Channels 2 and 32 I worked with through the years, a huge thank you and to my students at Columbia College, where I taught for 40 years. I want to thank them for the pride I feel when I see them succeeding locally and nationally. On a personal note, television is a 24-7 business, and those of us working evening, weekends, and holiday shifts know how much typical family time is missed. For my sons and daughter, Mark, Michael, and Melissa, I was MIA for much of their childhood, so I want to thank them for growing into such good people despite my shortcomings. I give all the credit for their fine character to their mother, Sue. I thank my wife, Suzette, for her love, trust, and support. She is my rock. Ultimately, I need to thank my original family, all of whom have passed on. I thank my mother and father for their courage and bravery to bring their brood to a new country to have a better life. 
I thank my seven brothers and four sisters, all older than me, upon whose shoulders I stand. Each in his or her own way prepared the path for me to succeed in graduating college, getting a job I loved, and being recognized for it. In like manner, I hope I inspire current and following generations of the Bernal line that for them too, success is possible. As my people say in Spanish, si se puede. Thank you. Congratulations to Richard Bernal for his award-winning career that spanned decades. Speaking of awards, the Chicago Midwest chapter of the Television Academy sponsors Natus Student Production Awards to encourage the pursuit of excellence in video production for high school students. The categories are similar to the Emmys, and students from throughout the Chicago area participate. Most of the competing schools have television departments that often produce newscasts for students, teachers, and parents to watch. The best entries in each category receive Crystal Pillar Awards. We thought you would enjoy watching a sample of this year's winning entries. Dear Future Self, Let me just remind you, 2020 is a weird time to be alive. It has been a year of ups and downs for everyone. You know when you would usually go to Six Flags in the summer with your friends and wait in line all day, dripping with sweat, just to feel the thrill of riding Goliath? Yeah, it's like that. Except if you were blindfolded, scared of all of the uncertainties ahead of you, and wearing a face mask. My name is Scott Dean. I am the owner and operator of Golden Age Cinemas, which owns the McHenry Outdoor Theater. Before COVID, we would fit 900 cars in here every Friday and Saturday. I mean, everywhere you looked, there were cars. They went, you know, uh, to the limits of the fence line around us. And now we can only do 450. I feel like you, no one ever really gets that expe like true experience of being outside, sitting in your car, you know, just relaxing with blankets and everything, and then being able to watch a movie. I mean, you could do that at home, but it doesn't really have that special effect. Gary Farrar in New York has become one of the nation's top Zoom magicians, and he's found more success in the virtual format than he could have ever dreamed of. My name is Gary Farrar. I am a magician and mentalist based out of New York. As of April, I switched over to doing it virtually, and it's super casual. No one wants to just sit there on mute and watch somebody show off on the other end of the screen. They want it to feel like uh, a party. And that's what I've been doing. I'm now at over 450 virtual paid private performances. It's still a struggle identifying as a Muslim and gay at the same time in this community because of the rejection I face from both sides. After receiving many threats from all over the place, including my own family, I'd become severely depressed and attempted to take my own life. I was quickly rushed to the ER in critical condition and I miss so many days of school not being able to see my supportive friends. With this story, I want to show others that you can practice your own faith and still be part of the LGBTQ community, even if you're hit with rejection and hate. And I want to show that religion is not tolerant of hate, and I want to show those who justify their homophobia with religion to see what it's like living life as an LGBTQ Muslim. It's time to accept that LGBTQ Muslims exist, and your identity is your own choice and no one else's. to a sink and soap, using hand sanitizer is your best bet. But remember, use the appropriate amount. We all need toilet paper, but no one needs all of it. Help each other out by getting only what you need and leaving the rest for other people. Make sure to keep yourself entertained by trying out a new hobby like cooking. But don't let cabin fever get the best of you and avoid doing anything reckless.
Even though these are stressful times, remember to breathe and stay calm. If you have a problem, you don't have to keep it to yourself or act like there's nothing wrong. Nine high schools were on the receiving end of the TV Academy's Crystal Pillar Awards this year. Our regional high school winners go on to compete nationally with winning entries from other Natus chapters across the nation. We're proud to report that Chicago Midwest high schoolers have brought home national awards every year since the program began. Let's give a shout out to Student Production Awards coordinator Dan Magner for orchestrating this annual competition and to TV Academy Junior Board member Anthony Landall for editing the highlight video. Still to come, we present Silver Circle honors to a highly successful television news executive. Our Silver Circle celebration continues now, hosted by the Chicago Midwest Chapter of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Our next honoree is a much sought after television executive, Jennifer Lyons who just a few weeks ago was named president and general manager of CBS2. Here to introduce Jennifer's career video is former WGN-TV news director and 2013 Silver Circle honoree, Greg Caputo. There comes a time when many people don't really know what they're going to be doing for the rest of their lives. Jennifer Lyons is one of those people that you knew from day one was going to be a news director, was going to be a major player in this industry. Jennifer and I started working together many years ago. She was a producer, I was not. And she worked her way up and became one of the best, most sought after executives in television. I'm proud to say that Jennifer Lyons has been a, a true compatriot of mine and has been someone with whom I have been very close and very, very happy to be here to introduce her and to introduce this tape. When this young journalist walked into WGN, her kindness was in full display, but few knew the strength behind the sweet smile. I was thinking that she was rather young, and I didn't know if she was quite ready to take on Chicago. But Jennifer Ann Vanderbosch knew at a very young age. Her drive prompted a bike ride to see legendary WGN broadcaster Jack Taylor, who lived in the neighborhood. I asked my parents, can I ride my bike down there, knock on the door, and ask them questions. The ongoing battle between Mayor Byrne and some members of Chicago's media has now apparently... But I really did not recognize her great talent the first time I met her. Years later, we reconnected and I said, Jack, do you remember? And he's like, of course I do, Jennifer. She revolutionized the business. And I'm very proud of her. As we reported a few nights ago, the Justice Jack's Department pearls of wisdom were a gem to wrong. Jen, who began playing newscaster in her own home. Who can turn the world down with her smile? I played it in the basement. I watched Mary Tyler Moore. I wanted to be just like Mary Richards. This is WGN Television Chicago. She also tuned into Channel 9 daily. I always knew. It was always my goal. Big dreams for this Kildeer kid who thought the mountains would be where she made her mark. A competitive skier at the University of New Hampshire, her technique was unrivaled. For my freshman year in college, I went to the Junior Olympics and competed, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. It turns out this gold was more of a lure than a gold medal. 
Emmys came by the handful in her career, which moved at the speed of a downhill run. I watched her develop into some, into a person that was ready for the next step. The journalism run began after Jen transferred to Iowa State. Before even taking classes in the field, she applied for an internship as a multimedia journalist. I was over my skis for sure, it's hilarious. Good morning. A group of Senate Democrats are trying to figure out how to save the state's new child support computer. By my senior year in, in college, I was a producer, I was a writer, I was a photographer. More than 10,000 people come to the Plymouth County Fair every day. And I was a live truck operator, and I couldn't have been happier. Most towns have a summer celebration, but Rock Valley, Iowa has a Freedom Day festival. This parade is one of the main events this year. Covering small town stories, this Midwest girl at heart gave her heart away in Iowa, meeting Dale Lyons, the man with whom she would parent six children. He's given me so many opportunities to go and fulfill my passion. And I said, so how many children would you like to have? And she said, 10. I said, 10? <laughs> First came Marie, then Gregory, John Paul, Claire, and Michael. Most thought Jen's main goal was motherhood. She knew better. She wanted to raise kids, run a household, and a newsroom. The fact that she wanted to do both and she felt like she could handle it, when I thought about it, I said, hmm, that girl is true grit. At the helm of WGN, she treated employees as her extended family. She had a very unique and interesting balance of, of self-awareness and empathy and emotional intelligence, right? And um, But she was also, you know, just sharp as a tack and and bright. The opportunity to help others thrive came after she sacrificed herself, working overnights and weekends, taking per diem positions, until she was certain her family was ready for her to take on news full time. I'm a big believer in you can have it all, but you can't have it all at once. You're watching Chicago's very own WGN News. The first big role came as noon show EP after Jen thought she was finished having babies. My number five went to kindergarten. And I went to the news director's office and I said, put me in coach. And so I got a gig and six months later, Casey came along. <laughs> and he has been the greatest joy in my life. Casey's delivery was difficult, an emergency surgery and bleeding that just wouldn't stop. Jen was in critical condition. They told my husband to prepare for the worst. She leaned on her faith. In time, strength and desire saw Jen recover. Soon, she was back in the newsroom. Jen's passion for news is really nothing like I've seen before. Um, she really believes in truth. She believes in justice. She's able to, to take that honesty and to take that truthfulness and make sure that it permeates through the entire organization. That's not an easy trick. Uh, she's, she's able to do that in a way that makes everybody better. She believes in great storytelling, and she believes in the journalists in the city of Chicago. Most of all, she believed in herself. Promotions followed at a rapid pace. And then to be given the opportunity to take control of the WGN Morning News and be the executive producer of such a awesome operation, and then assistant news director, and then news director, my gosh, that doesn't happen often. It was really interesting to watch her move through the staff to get things done, to get what she wanted done. We built out a website, we built out a web team. We were the first in the market to stream on the website. And we were the first station to stream our newscast on the phone. And then from there I built a 24-7 web stream. When Nextar bought WGN, Top Brass tapped Jennifer to build a network. News Nation's vice president hired more than 100 people in pandemic, designed, ordered, and oversaw the building of a brand new newsroom and studio. Of all the different news directors, news leaders, and overall leaders that, that I either interviewed, hired, heard, uh, Jen's towards the top of, of uh, uh, just the best of the best. A picture of Mary Tyler Moore hung in Jen's office. But this woman did more than turn the world on with her smile. She changed the world of television in Chicago. And now she's off to her next adventure at the helm of CBS2 as president and general manager. As always, aiming high. That's journalist extraordinaire Jennifer Lyons. It's my pleasure to introduce Silver Circle honoree Jennifer Lyons. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful plaque. This is such an honor to be welcomed into the Silver Circle. 
Many thanks to the Natus crew. Greg Caputo, thank you for the years of mentoring and helping me become the leader I am and for today's introduction. Dina Baer and Mike D'Angelo, thank you for your wonderful video and your unmatched creativity. Being behind the scenes, I never took time to take pictures. You managed to pull together a beautiful piece. When I had visions of being just like Mary Tyler Moore when I was a little girl, I wasn't dreaming big enough. The career I've had thus far is more than I could have ever imagined. Working for more than 25 years in my hometown, it's an awesome responsibility of working with smart people to build and grow a newsroom that cares deeply about the stories they tell for the community they love. Showcasing investigative stories that change laws and make the world a little better place. And being able to give back through back to school fairs, toy drives, or a food drive. We move so fast, we don't often take time to reflect. I was given that opportunity through this honor. I also realized just how much fun I've had. Most journalists you've heard from tonight are out in the front lines of the story, bringing firsthand accounts. I always thought I had an even better job. Being that producer in the control room, the front row to history unfolding. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than breaking news and long form storytelling, digging deep into the issues. Then there's that special coverage that's so much fun to plan and choreograph. Snow coverage to late night election results. The rallies for the Bulls, White Sox, Cubs, and Hawks. A career in television is like one big group project. You cannot do it alone. No one ever has. You need to work with the people put in your lives to figure out how to get it done. It always amazes me. No matter what is put in front of you, the team gets over the finish line because you work together toward the common goal. I have so many people to thank. It would be impossible to name names, but a few get a special shout out. First, my husband and six children. Thank you for supporting me through every step of my career. We can all share a laugh about the times that news broke out and I had to jump into action. To my mom and dad and siblings, Thank you for putting up with my endless newscasts I will put on from our family room fireplace. Lastly, Sandy Pudar. Sandy, you've been an incredible partner in crime over the years. I truly could not have done it without you. As I said, there are too many people to mention, but I do credit my run from part-time news writer to general manager to everyone who has worked alongside me, to those who had my back, to those who reached back and pulled me forward, and to those who encouraged me along the way. I have learned so much from all of you. Thank you. Congratulations to one of the most admired television executives in the nation and my new boss, Jennifer Lyons. Because of the pandemic, the last time we met in person for a Silver Circle celebration was May of 2019. Since that day, we have lost several Silver Circle honorees. Let's take a moment to pay tribute to these men and women whose careers exemplify television excellence.
Welcome back to the 2021 Silver Circle Ceremony. It's now my pleasure to introduce the president of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, John Owens. Good afternoon and congratulations to our 10 Silver Circle honorees for 2021. This event is long overdue. This prestigious class should have been inducted in 2020, but for the first time in its 30 year history, our Silver Circle event had to be postponed due to the worldwide pandemic. So we're thrilled to be able to celebrate the careers of this notable class, even though we're doing it virtually. Later this fall, we're preparing for the 63rd annual Chicago Midwest Emmy Awards. And like the Silver Circle event this year, the Emmys will also be held virtually in 2021. Again, this is out of concern for the safety of those who would normally be attending the Emmys in person. We know that the Emmys and the Silver Circle events are meant to be celebrated in person, and we're truly looking forward to getting the opportunity to celebrate broadcast excellence with you in person again in 2022. In the meantime, please visit our website, chicagoemmyonline.org, to see all that's happening with your local TV Academy chapter, not just Emmys and Silver Circle, but scholarships, networking, workshops, and more. Congratulations again to this year's Silver Circle honorees, and a special thanks from the Academy to our host, Jim Williams, who's about to introduce our final honoree. Thank you, John. Our final honoree has a reporting and anchoring career that is hard to match. He is ABC7 News' Alan Krzyzewski. Here to tell us about Alan is his former co-anchor, Kathy Brock. When Alan and I met in 1990, he was just 29, but already a seasoned Chicago veteran with eight years on the air. That spring, ABC's then general manager told Alan that he had some huge news for him, but that he'd have to wait a week to find out. Alan, justifiably so, thought that he was getting a promotion. Instead, what he got was me. A partner on the morning show that already had a 50 plus share. I was so nervous about that job, but instead of Alan showing his disappointment that I was the big surprise, he was gracious and showed me the way. It's that same integrity and leadership that's been a driving force in the newsroom for nearly four decades. Colleagues describe Alan as authentic, the consummate professional, empathetic, funny, an outstanding journalist, but even a better human being. Alan's meticulous about his work. He finds the human side of every story and never ceases to amaze when the show goes off the rails or there's breaking news. And he calmly and adeptly always holds things together. Nightly, Alan goes through every script, writing and rewriting. And what's really remarkable is he directs that same focus on the people around him. Alan really does want to know how your kids are. Is the week going okay? Or, hey, how are you? Alan's a guy who spends precious vacation time on humanitarian causes. And every year, the week before Christmas, there's something that we've all fondly come to know as Crashmas, where Alan brings homemade food and treats in for the entire newsroom for an entire week. My friend defies the age old adage that nice guys finish last. In the nearly 40 years that Alan's been on the air in Chicago, every show he's anchored, the morning show, the four, the five, the six, the 10, has finished in exactly the same place. Number one. Alan was just 21 when he started at WLS in 1982, street reporting on his first week on the air in Chicago. And Chicago police say that there still are many areas that still remain to be covered. A reporter, yes, but Alan brought additional skills to Channel 7. Well, how does it look? Are we going to get any more snow real soon? It certainly does look like it may be coming sooner than we expected. Uh, certainly before the end of the week, two frontal systems have now passed through the Chicago area. And while he never wanted to be a weather anchor. Joel, it is absolutely miserable out here, almost unbelievable. Reporting both weather and news in Binghamton, New York and Austin, Texas, brought him to Chicago. In 1984, Allen began a new position, anchoring the news cut-ins during Good Morning America. Good morning, I'm Alan Krzyzewski. The time right now, 825. And soon, he could be seen each morning with another young Chicago TV personality. And now here's Oprah. Good morning. Imagine having the hips and arms of Harrison Ford. Oh, just imagine. <laughs> <laughs> then in 1989, a Chicago first. 
Good morning. It is 6.15 on this Monday morning, January the 30th. We welcome you to our very first edition of Eyewitness News this morning. Chicago's first morning TV newscast got underway. Good morning. I'm Alan Krzyzewski. I'm Kathy Brock. After successfully launching the morning show, Chicago's number one news with Alan Krzyzewski. Alan has gone on to anchor every afternoon and evening newscast at ABC7. Right now on Eyewitness News, a strip mall shootout. And in 2016, Alan took on his current role, anchoring the 5, the 6, and the 10 p.m. newscasts. Uh, no, I wish I got a whole <laughs> lot more tips that day, Cheryl, that's for sure. Alan and his wife Colleen have been married for 39 years. They have three incredible adult children, Kaylin, Kiera, and Kian, and three beautiful grandchildren, Caroline, Harrison, and Theodore. His time in Chicago is filled with countless news moments. It's going to be an, ex an extended party. Yeah, well absolutely. Chicago sports legends, history-making mayors. Now you hear the crowd shouting, Tony, Tony. And the full contact sport of Chicago politics that sometimes took to the streets. He's reported from four Democratic national conventions, covered immigration from both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border, and shared stories from Puerto Rico in the devastating aftermath of Hurricane Maria. We didn't deserve this. It's like uh, the devil took over. Hi, Alan. Good to see you. Hi, Welcome to, to see Rome. See Alan has also led the station's coverage of the Roman Catholic Church, reporting on three Chicago Cardinal Archbishops and three popes from all over the world. Holy Land? Well, I've been Holy Land. Uh, you're talking about Nebraska? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He has traveled to Rome extensively, covering the church's handling of the U.S. sexual abuse crisis, the death of Pope John Paul II, and the resignation of Pope Benedict XVI. Hard to describe the excitement in this crowd. The bells are ringing. They have seen the smoke. He was even in St. Peter's Square in 2013 when the white smoke went up and thousands rushed to get their first glimpse of Pope Francis. I want the world to remember and to know and never, ever, ever forget. Allen says the capstone of his career is this incredible opportunity in 2019. Now, a Roman Catholic Cardinal and a Jewish Holocaust survivor walk through that gate together, making a point of the bitter lie in the words above. When the late Fritzi Fritschall shared her personal story of surviving the Holocaust and her passion to fight against hatred with Alan and Cardinal Blaise Supich. I can tell you that whenever I see a candle burning, I'll always remember this day. Thank you. That's a nice thing to say. Through it all, Alan's leadership, his integrity, and passion has fueled an incredible career. But it is his kindness and humanity that sets him apart as a journalist and as a friend. We appreciate that you turn to us each day, and we hope that you'll continue to do so for many years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Krzyzewski. It is quite a journey that brings all of us here tonight, and I want to thank Kathy Brock, producer Ross Widener, and editor Annie Asp for putting that career retrospective together, which can't help but make me feel really, really old. I wasn't born in our great city, but I'd like to consider myself an adopted son, a student of the Chicago school, as we say. And starting to work here at the age of 21, it's really not a stretch to say that I've grown up here. And I owe so much to the photographers, the editors, the technicians, the writers, the producers, the directors, and the managers who taught me to know what I was doing and also saved my butt when I did not. But what an honor to walk in the footsteps of true journalism giants, men and women determined to find truth because that is, after all, what this is all about. And now to be welcomed into the silver circle it's a circle filled with their names. And now the names of those that I'm honored to be among tonight in the best city for broadcast journalism in our nation. So congratulations to all of you. So thank you to the Academy. That's fun to say. And, and thank you to my beautiful wife, Colleen, who has tolerated the long hours and the demands of this crazy business. She is the CEO of our family. I love you. And thanks to God, who every day blesses me beyond measure. Thank you. 
Congratulations to Alan Krzyzewski and all the wonderful honorees who were inducted into the prestigious Silver Circle. Hopefully we can celebrate in person next year. Meantime, we encourage you to nominate television professionals who you feel are worthy of the Silver Circle honors. Go to ChicagoEmmyOnline.org for all the information. It's been my great pleasure hosting this year's Silver Circle honors. I'm Jim Williams. We thank you for being part of the celebration. This has been the 2021 Silver Circle Honors Ceremony, presented by the Chicago Midwest Chapter of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. You can view this ceremony again, find out about the upcoming Emmy presentation, donate to our scholarship fund, learn about our workshops, or become a member of the TV Academy by going to our website, chicagoemmyonline.org. Congratulations to the Silver Circle honorees, and thank you for being part of our celebration. With so much on the line. Good evening, it's great to have you with us. Here. More people turn here. America's number one most watched newscast, ABC World News Tonight with David Newell. As we come on the air tonight, there are major developments. And ABC 7 Eyewitness News, Chicago's number one news with Alan Krzyzewski and Cheryl Burton. Local, national, straightforward facts right here. ABC 7 Eyewitness News and ABC World News Tonight.